Okay, now, from yesterday, watch. Congresswoman Omar is a valued member of our caucus. So do you want people to just let it go? What I'm saying is, is end of subject. She clarified, we thanked her. End of subject. So House Speaker Nancy Pelosi dialing back her criticism of Congresswoman Elon Omar after the progressive Democrat compared the U.S. and Israel to Hamas and the Taliban. I want to bring in go, uh, Joe Concha, media analyst. Joe, how you doing? Good day to you. I mean, credit to Dana Bash watching that interview. I mean, she tried. She tried. She poked and she pried, and Nancy Pelosi shut her down at every turn. How did you see it? I see it as Nancy Pelosi may be seeing now the horizon in terms of her career coming to an end. Remember, in 2022, Bill, the GOP only needs to take back something like, what, five or six seats in order to retire Nancy Pelosi as House Speaker. When you look at President Obama in 2010, he lost 63 seats in his first midterm. Donald Trump, 43 seats in his first midterm. So for the GOP to take power, uh, that won't be too hard. But here with Pelosi, principles can't be applied only when convenient. She needs to take a stand here, but she won't because she knows there's more passion, more power coming from the squad left plank of the party than the establishment. The problem here now is that Democrats stand to be the anti-party, uh, defined by not standing up to anti-Semitism, as seen here with Omar's comments, or standing up to Antifa, or standing up to anti-American comments and comparing the United States to a terror organization. And Pelosi's non-actions here, Bill, sends a strong message to those 12 Democrats who bravely condemned Omar's remarks that AOC and Omar and Tlaib are far more important than you are while serving as the best, best propaganda for actual terror organizations like Hamas and emboldening them to carry out attacks against Israeli civilians further, Bill. All right. I got another one for you. You've been following this Tom Hanks mm -hmm. story, right? I mean, he wrote a piece. Oh, he yeah. wrote an essay. Uh, Eric Deegans, I think that's, that's his name. He's a writer for NPR. Uh, here's what he says. He says, Tom Hanks is a non-racist. It's time for him to be an anti-racist. Uh, here's a paragraph, all right? It's wonderful that Hanks stepped forward to advocate for teaching about a race-based massacre, but it's not enough. Apparently, Hanks wrote about Tulsa. He's built a career playing righteous white men. He's a baby boomer star who's built a sizable part of his career on stories about American white men doing the right thing. If he really wants to make a difference, Hanks and other stars need to talk specifically about how their work has contributed to these problems and how they will change. End quote. Joe. Huh. Boy, Tom Hanks has some audacity building his iconic career out of playing, get this, Bill, a white guy. And now NPR, your taxpayer dollars at work, now condemns him literally after writing an op-ed urging for more focus in the history curriculums in schools across America on the Tulsa massacre. And the writer of this piece, Eric Dagan, you mentioned before, he's now playing the victim on social media. He's complaining about being bullied and insulted because he wrote this piece, because it's so profoundly stupid. He deserves all the criticism that he gets. And here's the thing, though, Bill, for NPR and Dagan's and perpetual protesters, no matter no matter what Tom Hanks do, does, it will never be enough. He supports more than three dozen charities, Hanks does, from helping and honoring military vets. He's famously done, done that also in movies with Band of Brothers, but also women's empowerment or children's health care and fighting cancer and diabetes. But no, for one guy from NPR, he isn't doing enough to make the world a better place. How's that working out right now? Well, if he was looking for attention, he's getting it. Apparently, he's proud of what he wrote. Uh, he did an interview and said uh, he stands by it. Uh, but being white in America has its... Um, Has apparently How do you finish this sentence, a lot of pitfalls <laughs> from apparently. one white guy to another. Joe Concha will talk to you later in the week, okay? Nice I'm to more see Spanish you. than anything, but I hear you, man. Yeah. All right, have to, a good one. To my white co anchor. Oh, here, my gosh. Yeah. You remember that, um, that math <laughs> teacher Thanks, from the Midwest that Tom Hanks played? It was such a righteous white guy that he was a yeah. hero in World War II, or the guy who was a man in the body of a little kid who made toys. Mm -hmm. oh, it was horrible. Yeah. Horrible, horrible stuff that he's done through the I hope he comes out swinging. I hope he goes will line he? by line. Wow, I hope will he? he Somebody has to eventually, right? Somebody has to. I, I hope he comes out and says, you know what? This is what my career has been about. These are the people that I've played. I'm yeah. proud of my career. Like, don't let, don't let it go. Respond. I, that, that, would, that would get a lot of respect. It would. And you push back because most people do not. No. Right? They that's sit the back problem. and they take and it and they the move problem. on. And that's why it keeps And, and Conscious Point is right. You yeah. know, it's, for some, it's never enough.